Welcome to the second installment of the Movie Feuds comic book bracket. I'm your host, Adam Olinger, and today we're going to be talking Zack Snyder films. He's got a lot of fetishes. One of them's oversaturated colors, another one's superhero movies, and he's done a few. Today we're going to talk about his trifecta. Well, well there's four of them, so I guess it would be a quadfecta. You know what? It doesn't matter. Trish, roll the intro. Trish! For the most part, Snyder assembles a pretty good list of actors, Gerard Butler's abs being a standout for me personally, although Ben Affleck's Batman gives him a run for his money. Butler and Affleck are certainly the big draws due to their badassness, that's a word now, but Jackie Earl Haley definitely deserves some praise for his accurate and fantastic portrayal as Rorschach. Rorschach, have I butchered that enough? It doesn't matter, I have no credibility on this show anyways. Henry Cavill? Henry Cavill? I never know how to say that either. He's a very good Clark Kent, aka Superman and Man of Steel. But in Batman v Superman, he seems to lack personality. His character doesn't get many moments to shine or show emotion like he did in MOS. On the flip side, Ben Affleck certainly nailed it as Batman and will definitely go down as one of the best. As for the side characters, everyone in 300 was great, with the standout being a young Michael Fassbender. The cast of Watchmen was interesting too, with my favorite being Dr. Manhattan for reasons I really don't want to go into right now. It was the blue dick. It was the, it was the penis. I think the most interesting of the bunch comes from Batman v Superman with the oddball being Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. He's very much a cartoon character and doesn't fit in with the tone of the movie. Hi guys, I'm Jesse Eisenberg. I mean Lex Luthor. I talk really fast, I don't take a lot of pauses in between my sentences, it makes me sound smart. Batman, you are going to fight Superman. Actually, Superman would be up here because he's flying. Batman's on the ground. I get, I get you too confused, you're both assholes. You're going to fight each other, I'm going to go do my thing, and then we're going to have fun. Haha. <laughs> Unless, of course, you both have the mom that's named Martha. That, that, could, that could affect things. That could be bad for me. If nothing else, Zack Snyder knows how to deliver pretty faces and rippling torsos, especially from that Gerard Butler, that Leonidas. I just, just a masterpiece. See this right here? This represents substance. Here comes Snyder in the style mobile. You know what I'm doing right now? I'm driving over it because that's what he's all about. Style over substance. That was a very long way to get to a very simple statement. They say simple? It doesn't matter. 300 may be smaller in the story department, but it's all about the action and it's well aware of that. Completely delivery. It's simple, it's entertaining, it's to the point. Watchmen, while very complex, still is a very unique movie with some intriguing alternate history and a well-paced story. It's got themes about world peace and humanity that actually make you think a bit. Shit gets pretty deep. Balls deep. Helm's Deep, Deep Blue Sea, Deep Impact, Deep Rising, Deep Blue Sea. I already said that. Scratch that one. Man of Steel, much like 300, keeps the narrative to the point. It's all about the hero's journey, and I love the amazing opening act showcasing the destruction of Krypton. You're never going to hear me say Zack Snyder can't craft an action scene, because all these movies have some very memorable moments. The opening of Watchmen, all the Persian battles in 300, Zod vs. Supes and Man of Steel, that awesome warehouse scene where Batman kicks everyone's dicks off, and of course the head-to-head -head fight between DC's finest. Everything is remarkable to look at. However, Batman v Superman suffers from very poor storytelling. There are so many plot points thrown in willy-nilly, this could have been six movies and probably should have. Maybe then we could have had more than four minutes of Superman actually fighting Batman in a Batman v Superman movie. You know what? I'm giving the story round to 300. I don't even give a shit about it. It's easy to watch. It's very replayable. Uh, these other movies, I have to be in a mood. I have to be in a frisky mood to get into some of these. Unless it's Batman v Superman, then I have to just want to pull the trigger on myself. Uh, that was a bit much. It's not that bad. It's a 5 out of 10 for me. It's just a mess. But it's, it's still entertaining. All the effects in these movies, this represents effects, are nothing short of fantastic. Snyder knows how to add spectacle to each scene and immerse you in his world of oversaturated colors and red capes. The red capes are coming. Look to the left and the red capes are coming. Look to the right and the red capes are coming. Everybody gets a red cape now. Everybody gets a red cape now. Red capes are coming. Red capes are coming. Look to the sky. Look to the sea. Look everybody, oh, red capes on me. Red capes are coming. Red capes are coming. I'm making this song up on the fly. Doing my Lex Luthor impression. I think it sucks. You think it's great. Everybody goes on a masturbate date. 
what the fuck am I? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. The music's well done. Man of Steel has a grand and epic soundtrack done by Hans Zimmer with drums blaring. Watchmen uses some older tunes from the 80s to make you feel like you're in a time period. 300 soundtrack gets you more jacked up than four bros at a CrossFit class after downing a bottle of whey protein each. Finally on to BVS again. The score's pretty awesome. Again done by Hans Zimmer. Junkie XL tags along, who has basically done every soundtrack for the past two years. Ah, this is tough. Man of Steel has some really great moments too, especially when uh, Supes is trying to find himself, his place in the world, you know, on Earth, where he lives now. I also like that Superman kicks a lot of ass in Man of Steel, and the camera moves quick with him. It makes you feel like these are gods battling. Much like if you filmed me fighting a bunch of toddlers after downing horse semen. And just picture that being a Family Guy cutaway joke with Peter Griffin, you know, beating the shit out of toddlers and drinking said semen. And then it would be funny. Sub subscribe if you haven't, please. It's worth it. See what I'm doing right now? I'm shaking a bag of Snyder movies. It's a very mixed bag what he's produced. I don't know why I'm doing these complicated visuals for you. The only one I wasn't too fond of was Batman v Superman. And by wasn't too fond, I mean I'd rather watch a German shaggy dog bang a Persian rug for three hours. Winner for me is a no-brainer. It's 300. Who gives a rat's ass what I think? I need you to vote and comment below. Make your voice heard so one of these superhero movies can go into the next round. And you better believe this is more than just reviews, buddy. This is movie feuds. And who else went to 300 in theaters, left, found a makeshift spear, stabbed the first person in the chest that they could find, and walked around with them like a goddamn marionette doll, killing people in his path? I wasn't the only one, right? So I'm not crazy. You did that too. Ha 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 ha!